Hi everybody, I'm Paul and welcome to today's Bringing the Zoo to You from Brookfield Zoo. Today I'm going to talk to you guys about some outstanding owls here at Brookfield Zoo. Uh, first I'm going to talk about Athena. Athena's with Francine right now and Athena's our great horned owl. Great horned owls are the most widely distributed owl in North America. They're actually one of the largest owls in North America. So she looks really big. She's got about four foot wingspan, but ironically enough, she actually only weighs about three and a half pounds. So while it looks like Francine's really, really strong in that left arm, it's not quite as heavy as you might think because a lot of that bulk with owls and other birds of prey, that's just feathers and feathers weigh almost nothing. And then also another thing that makes birds of prey, such as owls, really light is if you look inside their bone, they actually have hollow cavities inside their bones. Um, that makes them a little bit lighter because the lighter you are, the less energy you need to you, you know, get yourself up in the air and fly around. Um, because even though these guys are top predators, um, great horned owls, when they're fully grown, they have no predators of their own. Um, it's still a little bit dangerous every time you go out to hunt um, because you could get injured um, or your prey item could turn around and go after you. Um, so I've mentioned birds of prey several times and I'm going to explain what that means. Basically what it means is any bird that kind of goes off and hunts other animals as their food. Um, they, they also might be called raptors too. Raptors are what birds like owls and hawks and falcons might be called. Um, and one of the ways they hunt, well actually the only way they hunt, is with those huge talons there. And those talons are about an inch, inch and a half long, and she can grip down with about 300 pounds of pressure per square inch. Right now she knows Francine's a friend, and she knows, you know, nothing bad's going to happen, so she's just resting there. But if she clamped down, it probably would be a little bit uncomfortable, even with that glove on. So 300 pounds of pressure is about the same pressure that a great, or excuse me, a German Shepherd dog will actually use to bite. Um, yeah, <laughs> Athena agrees. Um, and once they've captured that prey with those really, really sharp talons, they'll actually tear into it with that really sharp beak they have right there. So a lot of times what we tell people is the talons are kind of like a fork and the beak is like a knife. So the talons are used to hold the food in place and the beak is used to cut that food up. So right by that beak, you might see those really huge eyeballs. And those eyes are about the, about the biggest bird eyeballs in North America. They're about the size of an adult human's. And they're actually um, almost cylindrical in shape, if you go back a little bit. They're not quite round like our eyes are. And they're so large that she can't move her eyeballs in her head. She has to move her entire head anytime she wants to look at anything. So you guys might be able to hold your head still, and you can look to the left and look to the right. She can't do that. So owls, in order to compensate, they can turn their head about 270 degrees around. So not quite all the way around, but most of the way there. Um, another thing you might notice, right above her eyeballs, she has a little tuft above each eye. Um, she's a great horned owl, and that's where their name comes from, is those little horns or tufts of feathers above her eye. Nobody's exactly sure what those are for. They think maybe they're for communication with other owls. Um, a lot of times people think that those are ears, but they're really not. Their ears are located behind the eyes and a little bit below. And one of the really neat things about their ears is they're actually asymmetrical. And what that means is one ear is a little bit higher in a different angle than the other ear. And that lets them kind of triangulate or just kind of figure out where prey items are just by hearing alone. So they have great eyesight, but they also have great hearing. They can actually hear a mouse step on a twig from about 75 feet away. Or in the wintertime, they can hear mice underneath the snow without ever seeing them, and they know exactly where they are. Uh, so these guys are great to have around because they're out there every day eating all the animals like mice and rats and rabbits and things that might otherwise overpopulate. Um, we call them nature's pest control. They're out there doing a job um, that we really wouldn't want to do. Um, so if we pan over to the left, we can see another species of owl here. You might think that these guys are baby owls, but these are actually screech owls. These are adult screech owls. Both of these guys are around between six and eight years old. Um, on the left with Craig, this is Weasley, our little redhead there. And then with Scott, we have um, Sterling, and she, he's a gray phase. Both of these guys are the exact same species. They're just different color phases. So one is gray and one is red. About um, one third of the eastern screech owl population is going to be the red phase, and the rest are all the gray phase. Uh, that does vary by location a little bit. But these guys, they only get to about, you know, maybe a, a 12 inch wingspan and about 140 grams. That's pretty light. Uh, that's about half a can of soda. Um, but these guys, they're really small and they still do a really good job um, controlling, you know, other 
species that might overpopulate. So again, the mice and the rats, they can grab animals that are about maybe a quarter to half their size, um, but they also eat some insects as well. So they might take some earthworms or things like that. Um, they also have really large eyes in proportion to their body size, but not quite as big as Athena's. Um, but yeah, if humans had eyes about the same proportion um, as owls do in proportion to our body size, they'd be about the size of oranges. So you can tell, you know, how big these eyes are. Do we have any questions about these guys? Yes. Yeah. Is Athena <laughs> a rescue animal? Yeah. So most of our birds of prey, actually all three of the ones that are here, these guys are non-releasable rehab animals. So you might see her left wing droops down a little bit. Um, so she was found injured in the wild. And unfortunately, they tried to patch her up as best they could, but that left wing just didn't heal properly. Um, so they sent her to us um, where she, you know, she gets to stay here. She gets free food, free housing, free vet care, and she gets to meet all of you guys too. And she gets to be an ambassador for her species. Um, so it's a pretty good deal. So what do they eat? So here we give them things like mice and rats and chicks and everything we get, we, you know, comes in frozen and then we thaw it out. Um, out in the wild, they might eat mice and rats and rabbits and squirrels and a lot of different small and furry things. Um, great horned owls are actually one of the major predators for skunks. They have a very poor sense of smell, so they really don't care if a skunk sprays them. They'll go right down and attack that skunk, and there's nothing that skunks can be able to do to, to deter the, uh, the great horned owl. So do they have clear eyelids? They do. Those are, that's called a nictitating membrane. So they have a regular eyelid, but then they also have a, um, a clear eyelid to protect their eye when they're maybe doing a steep dive to, to catch their prey. Or um, once they've caught that prey, they don't want anything, any dust or anything to get into their eye too. How far can an owl see? So nobody's exactly sure because their eyesight does vary by species. Um, but we estimate they can see a mouse about, the, about two football fields away with very little light. Uh, their eyesight is actually a lot better at dawn and dusk, uh, midday, when it's really, really bright out. Their eyesight is actually not quite as good as ours. Um, they have a lot of what are called rods in their eyes, and rods are really good at seeing in low light, but they don't really see color much. Do we have any more questions? <laughs> yes, what color is their tongue? What color is their tongue? Pink. They have a little pink tongue. I don't know if they're going to open their mouths right now. Um, How old do they live? So screech owls usually live into their early teens, so maybe about 12 to 13. Uh, great horned owls um, can live into their late 20s, early 30s. Let's see. Do the owls live together at the zoo? So the great horned owl does not live with anybody else because great horned owls are, again, top predators. And out in the wild, they will actually go after other owls. They'll go after all sorts of other animals. They've been known to hunt small hawks and kestrels and things like that as well. Um, but our two little screech owls, they do live together. Um, but again, Athena is a very efficient predator, so we keep her <laughs> separate. Why is Athena hissing? So that's called uh, guller flapping. They can do that a little bit when they get excited. They can also do that when they're overheated in the summertime. So she's kind of excited um, since we've you know, been closed for a little bit. She hasn't seen a whole lot of people except Francine and maybe a couple other keepers. Um, so she's kind of excited. Um, but the camera's making her a little bit nervous too. So she'll go home right after this. Why are the keepers wearing gloves? So like I said, the, the, the owls have really, really sharp talons to catch their prey. And even though they know us, if they got a little bit spooked, they might grip down and without those gloves, um, it can do a little bit of damage to our, to our hands. Um, the screech owls, it really wouldn't be, but you, but you still don't want to get pierced by one of those. Um, whereas Athena, again, if she, you know, she can grip down with about 300 pounds of pressure per square inch, that could go right through somebody's arm. So that's pretty dangerous. So that's a reinforced glove. Um, so that's to prevent that just in case. Um, again, she doesn't really mind Francine. She kind of likes Francine, so she's not gripping down very hard right now. Does Scott have a favorite owl? <laughs> <laughs> I think Scott's favorite owl is probably Sterling. Well, you know, no, we have to we have to treat them all fairly, right? But Sterling is pretty cool. <laughs> why, I guess we don't want to play favorites. Yeah. And why is Sterling making that noise? I think he's just a little bit excited too. So screech owls, it's kind of neat. They do a little trilling noise. Um, but they also do, um, they don't really screech. They whinny like a pony almost. 
Um, if you're listening for a great horned owl, one of the really neat tricks is we use what's called a mnemonic device, so kind of human words that can sort of sound um, like the owl's call. So the trick for great horned owls is who's awake, me too. So kind of like a hoot, 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 hoo, something like that. Um, I'm not even going to attempt the screech owl one because, again, <laughs> it's more like a horse whinny, and that would just be kind of silly at this point. <laughs> so why are these owls awake during the day? So these guys have sort of adjusted to our, our, our pattern because we do feed them during the day. They get to interact with us during the day. And they really, you know, I think they do kind of enjoy the interaction. Um, but also a lot of times owls will be up during the day. They'll, they'll go back to sleep. They'll kind of scan around. They do what we call perch and search. They sit up in the tree and they scan around and they look to see if there's anything out there. Um, and opportunistically, they might hunt something during the day. Generally, they're more active at dawn and dusk, though. How fast can they fly? They're actually not the fastest flyers. If you look at their wings, they're sort of short, um, but they're very wide. So they're really built more for agile um, flying. So they can fly between trees and things like that. They can maneuver really well, especially the screech owls. The screech owls can maneuver so well that they, some, they can sometimes catch bats right off the wing. Um, animals with longer wings, like falcons, longer, skinnier wings, those guys are built for speed. Um, another really neat fact about these guys is they're what we call ambush predators. Um, so like I said, they sit up on a tree and they just wait and wait and wait and then something walks out in the open and then they swoop down and catch it. Um, but in order to surprise that animal, they have to be very, very quiet. So if you look at these owls, everything is covered in feathers except maybe the beak, the eyes, and the talons. Um, so that kind of dampens the sound that they might make when they swoop on down. But not only that, I don't think we're going to be able to get a good look at it, but on their feathers, there's little serrated edges to each feather. So it's kind of frayed. Uh, it's not very smooth. And what that does is when they're flapping their wings, it takes that big swoosh of air and breaks it up into tiny little swooshes of air that are a lot quieter. Can you have an owl as a pet? No, you cannot. And I really, really don't recommend it. They don't make good pets. They, they are you know, very difficult to feed because you have to feed them live things every single day. Um, well, not live, but... Um, they, they're, they're predators, so you have to acquire uh, meat items, so mice and rats and rats and, or rabbits and things like that. Um, but also, they have those really, really sharp talons and that really, really sharp beak. Um, so all of our animal care specialists here, they are highly trained and they understand um, animal body language. They understand the natural history be behind these animals. They know exactly the, their nutritional needs. They know their behavioral needs. Um, so they understand exactly what an owl needs, but the average person probably wouldn't be able to do that. How many owls do we have at Brookfield Zoo? I believe we just have the three at the moment. Yeah. So these guys are all in our ambassador program. So these guys are the ones you might see around the park or if we ever come to your school or your library, these guys might be the ones that are visiting. Do their feathers keep them warm in the cold months? They do. The feathers are very, very insulating. And that's one of the reasons they have those really, um, they have quite a few feathers. Um, there's a, like I said, there's a lot of you know, a lot of feathers there that make them look a lot larger than they really are. Um, and that just traps warm air between them and the outside world. Uh, because these guys do live in this area year round. Do the owl trainers have muscular left arms? <laughs> <laughs> I think they are, yeah, they are a little bit uh, stronger in the left arm. Um, but again, these get the, you know, they aren't the heaviest animals around. They're a little bit deceiving in that way. When you move up to some of the bigger birds, like some of our red-tailed hawks, those guys still aren't giant, but uh, they get tiring after a while. And even though Athena is only about three and a half pounds, you know, after 15, 20 minutes, they can get a little tiring after a while. <laughs> uh, can any of these owls fly? Um, so our little screech owls can. Um, they have limited flight ability. Um, they both came in with um, wing injuries. Uh, I think Sterling's was a little bit more severe, unfortunately. Um, Athena really isn't able to fly, but she can get herself up to different perches and things like that. Um, but um, for the most part, it's very short flights. Uh, someone says they have a nest in their yard and a baby fell out of the nest. What can they do to protect it? Um, well, depending on how old that animal is, sometimes um, they'll, they'll fly out from the nest and the parent will still be in the area. They'll be feeding them on the ground. So you really don't want to move them if they're a little bit older. 
Um, you can contact a licensed wildlife rehabilitator. I really wouldn't recommend moving the animal. Um, most of the time they will come to you and then they'll assess whether that baby actually needs help or if they're just fledging. Um, they're learning to fly and their mom or dad is still in the area. So do they have two eyelids and why? They do. So they have um, regular eyelids like us, and then they have a clear membrane that closes over those eyes. And that's mainly used um, so they can still see, but they can also blink. So they're not really, you know, um, they're not really losing sight of anything when they blink that way. And can you... Um, also protects their eyes, too. Sorry. Uh, can you remind us of all the owl's names? So this is Weasley right here. He is a red phase eastern screech owl. And then Sterling is our gray phase eastern screech owl. And then Athena is our great horned owl, quite a bit larger. <laughs> All right, so thank you guys so much for visiting with us once again at Brookfield Zoo. Um, join us again next Monday at 11 a.m. for another Bringing the Zoo to You. And thank you so much for supporting Brookfield Zoo.